Hi, this is Miss Roman, and I am going to do a walkthrough of the Natural Selection Simulation Lab on the PHET website. First, you'll need to check to see if you have Java on your computer. If you don't, you'll need to download it, or you can work with a friend who has Java. Uh, you may collect data together, but each of you will need to write your own data analysis and create your own graph. When you're ready to begin, you will either hit the arrow button or you will hit the download button. You will get a warning about the file, but you can hit keep. And then the simulation. Now they give you the option to do some practice uh, before you just jump right in to the lab. No pun intended. All right, in the bottom right hand uh, portion of the screen is the pause button. So hit the pause button first. You will be hitting the pause button a lot, so make sure you know where the pause button is. The purpose of this simulation is to determine if different traits of our bunnies are adaptations, if there is a change in the environment. The bunnies always begin with white fur, short ears, and short teeth. In the upper right hand part of the screen, this is where you will indicate the trait that you want to test. You can give the rabbits brown fur, you can give them long ears, or you can give them long teeth. So those are your three options for the traits. When you select your trait, make sure that you are hitting the buttons that are under the dominant uh, column and not the ones on the recessive column. So you will only hit one of these buttons here on the left. There are two main environmental controls that you have in the simulation. First is just the general overall location. Here the bunny is in the equator, but if we click on the snowflake, we can change the overall location to the Arctic. And in the general in the overall location we can make a change to that um, immediate environment and your choices are to bring wolves in uh, change the food supply so that it's more difficult to eat or change the food supply so that there are limited amounts before you begin the simulation, you will need to write your hypothesis. And your hypothesis will include the location of the experiment, either the Arctic or the equator. And then you must designate the trait of the rabbit that you are testing to determine if it is an adaptation if there is a change in the environment, either the introduction of wolves, uh, difficult food, or limited supply of food. I am going to um, determine if brown fur is an adaptation. So my hypothesis would be that brown fur in the equator is an adaptation if wolves are introduced. You will need to pick a different hypothesis, but we will do this run through together. All right, so the first thing we need to do is add a mate. And we will be watching this clock here in the middle top to let us know when the babies are going to be born and uh, keep track of what generation uh, we are. And if you look at this graph in the middle bottom, this graph will keep track also of how many bunnies we have with the different traits. 
And remember, evolution occurs to a population and not an individual. So we're going to need to let uh, some generations um, to be born so that we can build up our population before we start making changes. So I'm going to hit play and let our original parents have babies. All right. All right, hit pause. Now we see on the screen the parents and that first generation of rabbits. And right now they're all white with short ears and short teeth. Um, and we are going to uh, introduce the new trait in the second generation. So we're going to let these rabbits have babies. So we have a nice population. Okay, population uh, generation number two uh, we have here on the screen. And at the beginning of generation two, we're going to introduce the genetic mutation which causes our new phenotype of brown fur. So I'm going to cl click on fur and notice it's still paused. And when I hit the play button, we will have a mutation in one of the rabbits so that brown fur is an option. All right, so generation two, we make the mutation and we let this generation have babies. Okay, once again, hit pause as soon as uh, the generation is born. Okay, we see that we do have some brown bunnies now in generation number three. And take a look at the graph at the bottom of the screen. Uh, notice that the green dashed lines tell us how many brown fur rabbits we have, and the solid green line tells us how many white fur rabbits we have we will be documenting how many white fur rabbits we have in each generation and how many brown fur rabbits we have in each generation. Then by following multiple generations, we can determine if evolution has occurred. If evolution has occurred, there will be a change in the frequency of traits in the rabbits. That could be an increase or decrease in the number of white or brown bunnies. All right. During the third generation, we are going to make a change in the environment. I'm testing a change in the environment where wolves move in. So you can probably already guess what's going to happen so prepare yourself i'm going to click on wolves and then i'm going to hit play oh goodness oh goodness okay oops i'm going to hit pause again these bunnies have lived long enough to reproduce Remember, the definition of fitness is the ability of an organism to live long enough to reproduce. As we are recording the number of rabbits with particular traits, for my simulation, I am keeping track of how many white fur bunnies there are and how many brown fur bunnies they are. In my data table, these are the rabbits that will make it to my data table. We're only keeping track of rabbits that live long enough to reproduce. The graph you see at the bottom of the screen shows how many bunnies there are over time total. We are only going to record the number of bunnies that live long enough to reproduce. So our generation three number of rabbits are these rabbits here. If you look at our um, 
graph at the bottom of the screen, the numbers that we're going to record are after we see the effect of the wolves. So our generation three bunnies, we would have about four, it looks like, brown fur rabbits and six-ish white rabbits. Now, we're going to hit play and let the fourth generation of rabbits be born. I'm going to hit pause. Okay, the numbers go up. This is the initial number of generation four. But remember, we are only going to keep track of the bunnies that live long enough to reproduce. So we don't write down how many brown bunnies we have for the fourth generation, and we don't write down how many white bunnies we have in the fourth generation just yet. We need to wait to see who lives long enough to reproduce. So we hit play. Oh my goodness. Mm. It's horrible to watch. Okay, we hit pause again. And these are the bunnies that are part of generation four. So these are the numbers that you would write down in your data table. So you will keep track of how many bunnies you have for about six or seven generations. Then you will uh, graph your data and it will be a graph that has two lines, uh, one for your experimental phenotype and one for your control phenotype. And remember, it's not gonna look like this graph. This graph is keeping track of all the bunnies at all times. We are only keeping track of the bunnies that are fit, the ones that live long enough to reproduce. All right, you can use um, any experimental parameters except for the combination that I have used in this walkthrough. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know.